Okay, so it's no secret that I love this game, and I'm still not sure exactly why that is. I suppose it's kind of like when you open up a bag of Maltesers, and you tell yourself that you're only going to have a few, but you know that's just wishful thinking. And then you get halfway through the bag, and you're telling yourself to stop, but man, you just keep on going. But having said that, there's so much fun to be had in this game, and unless this isn't your cup of tea anyway, or you're not a fan of the mechanics and design choices, then it's almost impossible not to get something out of this one. Having said that, there are times when something, or rather, someone, comes along and not necessarily spoils your fun, but rather does something or doesn't do something that makes you question, okay, they're just being a dick. This is what this boils down to, they're just being a dick. So here is True Review's guide on how to not be a c in Final Fantasy XIV. Enjoy. Learn your job. This usually only applies to newer players, and while this isn't a big deal near the start of the game, this is a massive deal as you begin to climb levels. In fact, I've put this at the very first entry because this is probably the most important point on this list, and while the vast majority of players already know this and have learnt their role, I have come across some who have no idea what they're doing. This is a big deal for all players, regardless of what class you decide to take on, doubly so if you're playing as a tank or a healer. You've got to know what all of your skills do, when best to use them, and how to use them effectively, because knowing this, or not knowing this, is the difference between a successful run and a party wipe. Whenever taking on a new role, take the time to go off on your own, or even into Palace of the Dead, and test it out. Find out what works, or even look up some guides to help you out. Because otherwise, you get what I had a little while back when I did a run with a Dark Knight who spent his whole time spamming DPS attacks. Now, I hate it when other players start criticising others for being bad, as I'd rather talk them through their role, but dungeons are the one place you cannot fuck about in, and if you are going to register for Duty Roulette, then you've got to know what you're doing when battle commences. Roll on loot in dungeons. 9 out of 10 times, I encounter this and there is absolutely no need for it. For fuck's sake, how difficult is it to select either need, greed, or pass on an item? I mean, come on! So you've gone into a dungeon and you or someone else has found a treasure chest. It's been opened and now the party has to cast their lot on that item. One of those items is one you want, so thank you very much, I'll cast need on that. Two other players also cast on that item, so all we need now is for that last person to cast their lot too. I said all we need now is for that last person to cast their lot too. Dude, just fucking click one of the buttons! There always seems to be that one person who refuses to make a decision on attaining items for whatever reason. Like they don't need that item that much, that they're not even going to look at it, and certainly not going to click on the button that withdraws them from the role. What this tells me is that these players aren't willing to show any consideration to those who might want those items, and instead of having the draw done right there and then, these players would rather not look at what's been found and would rather make you wait for 300 seconds before the draw is finally made. It's bad manners and makes that player look like a dick. So even if you don't need any of these items, don't be a dick and just cast pass, alright? Stick with the group in deep dungeons. Both Palace of the Dead and Heaven on High are procedurally generated dungeons, and you unlock the first one a little into the main game, while Heaven on High comes during the Stormblood expansion. But what I'm trying to say here is that by the time you've unlocked these, you know all about dungeon etiquette. So why then do I constantly see players f***ing off on their own thinking that they can solo this shit? It's astounding the amount of times the group has headed into one room for me to look around and notice that, including myself, only three of us are accounted for. Meanwhile, this fourth player has gone off on their own, gone into a room full of enemies, aggroed all of them, died, and has typed the message dot 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 into the chat. Well, what the fuck did you expect? That all of those enemies were going to give you cake and a tummy rub? 
It's even worse when you're playing as a healer because you've constantly got to run between rooms, healing players that want to solo, and when one of them dies, you can bet your ass that they'll blame you for them wiping. Why not just stick with the fucking group? It's not rocket science. In fact, I see so many deep dungeon rules of common sense getting broken all the time that that could be its own list. Players entering rooms that don't need to be entered, tanks not tanking, healers wanting to play as DPS, every player thinking that they're the leader and no party support from anyone. But all of this isn't too bad, so long as you all stick together. If tanking, assess the situation before committing to it. This point was kind of inspired by my Palace of the Dead experiences, but I've seen it happen in dungeons too. I'm not going to lie to you, but tanking is a big responsibility. It's not necessarily hard, but there are certain things you need to be keeping on top of at all times, and DPSing isn't one of them. Now, I certainly have nothing against tanks pulling huge groups, and 99 times out of 100, it goes without a hitch, but since playing as a healer, I've noticed a trend. While I play as a tank, I always thought that it was common practice to listen to your healer, but that seems to have gone out the window nowadays. Good tanks will prevent the rest of the party from being attacked, but if you're pulling a large group, then it stands to reason that you're going to be taking heaps of damage, even with cooldowns. It also stands to reason, then, that your healer is going to be raping the shit out of their MP. Therefore, it also stands to reason that after you've killed one big group of enemies, you should then be checking your healer's MP reserves to see if they're good to go again. What you should not do is immediately throw yourself into another fight, because if you do, don't be surprised if your healer can't heal you anymore. The times I've seen this happen, the tank has turned to the healer after wiping and blamed them, and then can't understand why the rest of the party is putting the blame back on him. Tanking requires forward planning of cooldowns, consideration of where to position enemies, hoarding enmity, but also just as important is keeping an eye on the status of the rest of your party. If pulling a new group of enemies in this situation is likely to wipe the party, then reassess the situation. Again, not rocket science. Some players are new, so give them a chance. I've seen several videos online where players have recorded their bad experiences in dungeons and then go on to criticise certain players. But if you go down into the comments section, you'll find that it's full of people criticising the uploader for being an elitist player themselves and not taking the time to help out newer players, or even talking them through their class. And I totally agree, if someone in your party sucks, then okay, the fault lies with them for not learning their class, but you can either dump tons of unnecessary shit on them, or you could help them out and get the dungeon finished quicker. Yet despite the number of comments I've seen that resonates with my own practices here, I almost never see these players voicing this in dungeons. But what I do find a lot of, however, are so-called elitist players who will criticise any and all people who are not playing to 100% of their standards and are quite happy to make their complaints heard. Most of my worst runs were in early dungeons, but guys, that's to be expected. Newer players aren't level 70 veterans, so stop expecting them to be. If you're constantly wiping on a boss, Stop the party before starting the fight again, and ask if anyone isn't familiar with the mechanics. If someone isn't, then explain how it works, and I guarantee you, you will win that next fight. Alternatively, you could just say something rude or condescending, so when the fight starts again, that player will feel like shit, and still doesn't know how the fight works. Your party is only as strong as your weakest player, so if you help them out, you're all gonna benefit from it. I support other players in a selfish way. By helping them, I'm helping myself, and I honestly think that elitist players could learn something from that too. To Don't be a gill seller. So you need to head back to town to pick up a quest or some supplies. You head to the main market area and- oh. This again. They're there every day! Now, from what I can gather, this isn't an illegal practice, but I'm pretty sure that Square Enix doesn't allow it. 
I imagine that this happens in other MMOs, but isn't it annoying when you show up in any area and the same dude is trying to advertise their website when you can buy in-game currency? And that's buying with real money, mind you. I honestly hope that no one takes them up on their offer because this is so shady. It also kind of ruins the point of the game. What's better? Showing up saying that you've made millions of gil that you've worked hard to earn yourself, or... Showing up saying that you've made millions of gil that you bought using your credit card from some random player. You wouldn't buy something from someone in an alleyway wearing a trench coat, so why do it here? But it's just the fact that their adverts flood the chat box too. I might be in the middle of a conversation with someone, only for their message to be hidden because if I use a certain code, then I can get 3% off of my next gil purchase. Wow, that's a bargain right there! I'd better remember that next time I decide to ignore your advert like every other fucking time. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. Don't crash the market. While learning your class is by far the most important lesson to take away from this video, this entry is what gets me the most, and the funniest thing about it is, while players regularly engage in this, they're not gaining anything from it. So you've got an item and you want to sell it on the market board. So you've headed over to one of your retainers and you've given it over and it's going for a good amount of money. You send your retainer away and you go back to playing the game. A few hours later you think to yourself, huh, I wonder if it's worth checking the market to see if the price has gone down on that item. So you go back and have a look, only to find that someone has undercut you by, not a little, but by a staggering amount. By far, out of all the things I've seen players do in this game, this is the one thing that I will never understand. Okay, let's say for argument's sake that you've put something on the market for 100,000. Now, everyone knows that the market is competitive, so it's a given that when the next person comes along, they're going to sell that same item for slightly less than what you put it on the market for, because, hey, we all have stuff we want to sell, and that's fine. Undercutting is an acceptable practice here, and it's totally understandable. But if you are going to undercut me, then if I put the item up for 100,000, don't then put yours up for 9,000. But true, I want to sell this item as quickly as possible. No, I'm not going to accept that as an excuse, thank you very much. Because if you wanted to sell it ASAP, then you should have checked the sales history first. And if this is an item that sells like hotcakes, then putting it up for sale for anything under my 100,000 would have meant that yours would have been sold. Before you came along, the market had determined that that item's value was 100,000. But now that you've put it up for 9,000, you've determined that that is its current value now. As a result, the market for that item just crashed and it's all thanks to you. You've devalued that item by 91,000 gil, ruining it for everyone else. And I'd also argue that you've ruined it for yourself, because if that is an item that sells quickly, then you just fucked yourself out of an additional 91,000 gil. The tragedy of all of this is that in these cases, no one wins. Everyone loses and lasting economic damage has been caused, all because someone wanted to sell an item really quickly. My advice to you? See how much it's being sold for first, then check the sales history. Then, if for example, I'm selling mine for 100,000, sell yours for 99,999 gil. That way, yours is still the cheapest, and you're keeping the market intact, and you're going to get more money for it. In addition, when yours does sell, mine is still valued at 100,000, and it's the cheapest going, thus preserving the market. And that's the end of that video. A little different, I know, but this has been something I've wanted to do for a while now. And as a bonus, you know now how to not be a c**t in Final Fantasy XIV. Usual business will resume next week with the top 10 I already have in mind, but anyway, as always, like, subscribe, Twitter, whatever. Oh, and don't forget, uh, see ya!